Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TC Talk, back today with another video, and in today's video, we're going to be doing another video in our How to Katsu series. This video is going to be centered around Katsu archetypes or different types of Katsu builds. Uh, we've talked a little bit about what Katsu is, what do the combo lines mean, some of the deck building principles, and now that we've gone over deck building principles, we're going to show you some different types of archetypes that I think are viable in Katsu, ones that you can try out. I'll tell you which ones are more competitive based, which ones are more fun based, things of that nature, give you my reasons for them and kind of go through it uh, and see what your thoughts are. So if you like this type of content, please leave a like, comment or subscribe. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. If you're a long staying member, thank you so much for your continued support. And yeah, we'll get right into it. So I have four decks here. I have Tiger Katsu. I have or Tiger. I'm a name. They give them names. Tiger Katsu. You have Turtle Katsu, which is like the control build. Tiger Katsu is centered around um, a card called Tiger Swipe, which is right here. Then you have Breakpoint Katsu, which is my version of like just like a good value version of Katsu that presents a lot of hard to block attacks. And then you have what is the most competitive build, which is the Bonds Katsu list. Um, and I'm going to go through them one by one. We're going to start with the Bonds Katsu list because I think that's the most competitively viable one right now. It's the one that most people are playing. Uh, there obviously might be some card differences here and there uh, from what people are running, but this is the typical like Bonds build that you'll see. Um, and we'll kind of go through them. So like we said in our last video, so if you haven't missed it, go check it out. We had some deck building principles. One of the biggest things was, and, and you'll see this throughout each deck, is write 12 to 18 blues depending on the deck. Most of these have 12 to 17 or 13 to 17 with the exception of the Turtle Katsu, like the control build, which is going to have more resources um, in it for more Kadachi pitching. Uh, most of all of them only have 12 or less non-attacks. Uh, as you can see, we have three Ancestral Empowerment, two Razor Reflexes makes five. Two Concealed Blades makes seven. I only have seven in the main deck for this one. Um, and then, obviously, Flick Flack, if you want to put that in. So seven, ten for Flick Flack, and then 13 with Blue Flick Flack. So 13 cards that are not attacks. Uh, but going through it, most of the thing you'll see that's consistent with every list is the equipment. The only difference usually is the chest piece. Um, pretty much every Katsu list, for the most part, is going to be the chest and the legs are going to be the only difference, but your arms and your headpiece are usually always going to be mask momentum and breaking skills pretty much in every list um, with the exception of like some odd and end list. But the main list that people run are going to be that. So in the bonds list, the main purpose of this list, this is the most competitively viable list is all centered around the surging strike to dishonor line. So you have cards like surging strike in here. We're running six of them, which will then combo into cards like descendant gust wave and cards like Whelming Gust Wave, right? They give you a little bit more diversity. And then finally, you're trying to get good bonds of ancestry turns, which if you're not aware, if a card with Gust Wave in its name was the last attack this combat chain, this costs two less and has go again. When this attacks, you may banish a card with the word combo from your graveyard. If you do, search your deck for the card with the same name, banish it, then shuffle. You may play at this combat chain. So essentially what you're trying to do, like on a perfect turn, is play Surging Strike into... Descendant Gust Wave or Whelming Gust Wave. If you're trying to get the Dishonor line, usually it's Descendant Gust Wave, um, which is 10 damage total. Then you're gonna go. Then you're gonna play Bonds of Ancestry for 14 damage total. Go get another attack and then play, hopefully like a Dishonor for 18 damage. Now you might have other cards in there because depending on what cards you have in your hand, you can push even more damage. But that's the baseline thing you're trying to do, and you're trying to present some form of the Surging Strike line every turn. So whether it's Surging Strike into Whelming Gust Wave or Surging Strike into Descendant Gust Wave, it doesn't matter. You're trying to present that line literally for the most part every turn. When you, We even have cards like Be Like Water, which can turn into Surging Strike. If it hits, you're allowed to pay one additional resource to make it a Surging Strike to, again, present that line. When we're not playing that line, we're just playing good value attacks. You have stuff like Soul Beat Strike in here, which is a good three block, zero cost card that can be discarded for Katsu. And it comes in for four. You have cards like Spinning Wheel Kick, which are a one for four go again that can be searched with Katsu's ability. And then you have cards like Hundred Winds and Fluster Fist that are just really good value on your Bonds turns. These are like, other than Dishonor and Lord of Wind, um, these are your main, uh, not Lord of Wind, but other than Dishonor, these are your main Bonds targets um, when you're comboing in. So, really good for that. As far as cards that are not attacks, I'm still running two Razors. I think you need to have Razor not need you should have razor in every katsu deck it just changes the entire way 
people have to play against you in the late game. And a lot of decks right now are very, very good at blocking. So making them have to overblock, like if they know you don't have a Razor, maybe you've played the whole game and they're actually paying attention to your pitch and your play, and they notice you haven't played a Razor yet and you're down to like 10, 20 cards, they might honestly think like, oh, they don't, they're not playing Razor. And some of the Bonds lists right now aren't playing Razor Reflex, but I think you kind of need to have it because it really changes how your opponent has to interact with you late game, especially on Kadachis. So I keep those in the deck. I'm running three Ancestral Empowerment, kind of self-explanatory there. The one thing I do that not every Katsu player does, and you can change this if you want, some Katsus are running Flick Flack either in their side or their main board at red, but I run it at blue, at blue as well. I'm just trying to get a little bit more utility out of my blues. Having just the combo three block blues is nice, but being able to block with this and then block with another combo card for five, like especially on those hands where you draw like two blues and you're not going to do a lot of damage anyway the next turn, being able to block with this and then block with like a Fluster Fist for five is really, really nice. Um, and obviously, it's token blue and pitch for Gadachi, so it has that benefit for it. Um, and the sideboard, sideboards are going to be different for every meta. This sideboard is for right now, which is like Oldheim. Oldheim's about the living legend. And then uh, Lexi's really popular. So this sideboard could change depending on when you're watching this. If you're watching this six months from the day it was aired, your sideboard might be completely different, right? Dust Told Dawn might change things. But right now, I have Command and Conquerors in the sideboard for Lexi. If you can't afford Command and Conquerors, that's fine. Run something like Wreck Havoc or Humble. Um, I have one cheeky pummel on the list to try to disrupt Lexi a little bit more, but that's more of like some fun tech. Reinforce the line and sink belows for Guardian. And then this usually was Oldheim tech, but it could be subbed out once Oldheim leaves the format. Blazing Yori is usually a really good sideboard tool for Phi and for the Mirror. Um, and then we obviously have Null Rune in here for like Viscerai and stuff in Briar. If we play Wizard, we're racing them anyway. You're never going to want to pitch more than two in a Wizard anyway. So I only run AB1, to be honest with you. Then the next one, this is a style list. Obviously, the Bonds of Ancestry list has been added to this, but this is the style of list that I got top eight with in ProQuest Season 2 uh, with Katsu on. That was during the Chain era and the Starbo era, so I was able to still eke out a top eight, which is really nice. Um and the purpose of this list is honestly present as many annoying to block attacks as possible. We have as much, I call it breakpoint katsu. We have as much breakpoint attacks as humanly possible in this list. We have leg tap, fluster fist, bonds of ancestry when it's comboed. We have rise and ethros going into leg tap, soul beat strike, spinning wheel kick, torn and tempo, like all of these really, really good um, breakpoint attacks. The one downside to this list is it doesn't have as many zero cost targets as you would like. I mean, if we're counting right now, we have 9, 12, um, 12, 14, 17, um, 20, 23, 26, 29, 32, which is below what my Katsu principle was of trying to be at least at 35. 32 is a little low. Um, and honestly, something you could look at changing. The Bonds of Ancestry line definitely makes it a little bit harder, but with this list, you're really looking for that mid-range game plan, looking for really hard. You're not discarding for Katsu as much. You're really looking almost like an Ira play style, but with the occasional Katsu trigger. Um, and it's something that I found was really, really nice against aggro decks because they couldn't block stuff out with just one card. Uh, against Lexi, like they're basically not going to be able to block like their uh, leg tap, torn at tempo, soul beat strike. Those are just going to hit because Lexi's aren't going to give up two cards for that. So I, I really enjoy this list. The sideboard, again, is tech for what it is right now. Um, I put Humble on the list. Obviously, for Lexi is a big one. Um, sink below some of the occasional ones. In this list specifically, in my Bonds of Ancestry list, I'm running just Heart and Cross Trap. I don't run Tunic because I want to be able to get Surging Strike off the second I get it. But with this list, you could run Tunic in the slower matchups or anything that's not Heart and Cross Trap. But if you don't own a Tunic, just run Heart and Cross Trap. It works really well with Surging Strike and something I highly recommend. This is a really good list, honestly. Just a solid list to have fun with and try out a little bit. Um, if you want to get a little bit more Katsu targets, you could take out the Twin Twisters here that are one cost and put in some zero cost uh, to replace them. Definitely some different things you could do. Even the hurricane techniques. Like you could take out these three twin twisters and one hurricane technique and put in some zero cost attacks. Um, that would be really good. So just a really solid list that you could try. It's not one of the main ones you'll see, but it is one that you can try out. The next one is Turtle uh, is Tiger Katsu. Sorry, Turtle Katsu's last. Tiger Katsu. So this is around the tiger swipe combo and crouching tigers. So basically, crouching tigers are 
um, ephemeral, if I'm saying that correct. They normally don't come in for any damage. Uh, they, they're they a zero-cost attack, but go again. But when you use stuff like Roar the Tiger and Art of War and Predatory Streak, you basically can make like four of these, basically four Kadachis, but then they combo with Tiger Swipe, and Tiger Swipe normally is a zero for two, no go again, but when it's combo with a Crouching Tiger, it's a zero for four, go again. On hit, you create as many Crouching Tigers as you control in the combat chain. So, for example, if you play Roar the Tiger, which creates a Crouching Tiger and gives all your Tigers plus one, and then you play a Predatory Streak, making three more Tigers, so now you have four Tigers, you play a, play a Tiger, one of them's going to hit likely, they're probably not going to block out four one-power attacks, then you go get a Tiger Swipe, and you play it at the end of your Crouching Tiger line, and you basically tell them, like, here's four damage, and if you don't block this, I'm going to give four more damage because I'm going to get four more Tigers. It's really good for threatening mask and momentum triggers. Um, this list isn't as competitive as the Bonds list. It doesn't quite have the power ceiling. And against really good opponents who know how to block, it's its power diminishes a little bit. However, it's a fun list. And I don't think it's like not competitive. It will win games. And at an armory level, you definitely could win armory with this list, especially with new cards like Head Leads the Tail, which says when this attacks, name another card. Attack action cards with that name have plus one this combat chain. So you can like play Predatory Streak into Roar the Tiger, you off tunic, play head leads to tail, you name Crouching Tiger, and then all of a sudden your Crouching Tigers are each coming in for two. So two, 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 and then you also can go get a Tiger Swipe. So definitely some def cool things you can do with it. Um, I love the list. It's super fun. Um, even I've done a little bit of a little bit of tech. Uh, I put in stuff like one, two punch, um, just as some fun stuff because be like water. You could play it for three. If they don't block it, you make it a head jab and then you play something like one, two punch. I found that I play be like water actually like near the end of my chains now because you don't care about the surgeon striker twin twister line as much. Um, and you really, because of art of war, you want as many zero cost go again attacks as you can to help make those art of war turns worth it. So that's why having stuff like be like water has been really good um, overall. So, Really been enjoying this list. It's really fun, and it's definitely competitive enough to where like you won't feel like, like why am I playing this list? Um, with your sideboard, you got to be a little bit more careful with a Tiger Katsu sideboard because you want a low cost curve. You can't put a lot of two powers in there. So I have Command and Conquerors. Again, you could change these for Humble, Erase Face, Wreck Havoc, whatever you want. Flick Flax and Reinforce the Line. And then I have a little bit more AB because... The core of this deck, you really don't want to change it too much. Like, there's not much, too much tech you could put in here. So, because of that, like your sideboard slots don't aren't as crazy as they would be. Um, so, I'm really enjoying this one as well. And then finally, this one is a list way back when. I'm using new cards though. Um, when when Flesh and Blood first came out, Katsu used to play what was called a, a Turtle Katsu list, which was completely like control based, where you basically would play almost like Ira, where you block with two or three cards, then you Kadachi, Kadachi, Torn a Tempo, Threat and Mask Momentum, and you'd use cards like Flick Flack to gain really good value. So on a, any given turn, you would block with Flick Flack for three, block with another card for five because of the plus two combo from Flick Flack, and then you would Kadachi, Kadachi attack. And back then, it, that was insane value, right? Being able to block for eight, block for nine, and then a, attack for seven, threatening Mask Momentum trigger, you just got insanely good value. However, the power level of the game has rose, risen very, very much, and there's a lot of disruption in the game now. So Turtle Katsu is not as viable. No one's really tried it <laughs> really in depth at a high level since it was prominent. So I don't know if it would be useful at all now. I do think with heroes like Briar and split damage heroes like Viscerai having more power now and Fi, like you just can't block out enough. Even Lexi, right? Like you can't. You can't block enough to play that that value. If you're going to play that type of game, you might as well play someone like a Rockney who blocks a little bit better and can mill their deck out faster. That's just my opinion, but you could definitely try it. Um, I put cards like Visit the Floating Dojo in there. This specific Turtle Katsu build is mainly to um, like play a value game until you draw. You can arsenal one of the Surging Strike to bond to bonds of ancestry to dishonor pieces. So you arsenal like a Whelming or a Bonds, and then you wait for Surging Strike, and then you can then play the Surging Strike line out um, after you've played that value game to try to get over the top and win. So that's just my opinion on the list. I really, It's really fun to play, but not quite as good as you would think. Um, some cool tech pieces. I have Time Snap posted in here. 
uh, to help um, against some. Really, it's to help against Oldheim. Oldheim is about to be out of the 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 format. Basically, what you would do is you put time snap potion down, and then you're able to pop it when you have like McGinchy release and Lord of Wind in hand. So even if the Oldheim blocks it, you still can play out the Lord of Wind combo because you play McGinchy whether or not it hits. Um, you still can play Lord of Wind and then cycle targets back into your deck. There's like cool tech with that just to be able to like beat fatigue, but you don't need as much now unless Prism becomes what Prism used to be with the new Prism. But this this list isn't as as popular, but it's still a fun one to try if you want to try more of a control variant of Katsu. And there's more ways to build this Turtle Katsu list. This is just the way I would build it. You don't have to include the Bonds line. I just wanted to include the new line. I think it's really powerful, and it's actually really good if you're playing a value game until you hit that, hit that line. Um, the issue with this list is there's so much disruption now with like Uziri, um, even Lexi with Codex of Frailty and uh, Oldheim back when he had some some reactions that could make it difficult. There was just a lot. Of, and then Phi, which you can't fully block out. There was just a lot of decks that can kind of just push over the edge against this deck. But regardless, it's still a fun thing to try out. But hopefully these work for y'all. Hopefully you can try them out. I suggest if you really want to be super competitive, go with the Bonds of Ancestry list. Um, if you're wanting a fun list that's also competitive that you probably could grind out and make even better, uh, go with the uh, Tiger Katsu list. And then if you want like just a cool different deck to play, uh, go with the uh, go with the Breakpoint list. The Turtle list, that's for anyone that wants to try it. I personally wouldn't do it, but you can try it and see how it goes. It's just this is a known archetype in Katsu, so I wanted to make sure people understood it. Um, yeah. All the decks will be linked in the description below. Feel free to check them out. Let me know if this this was useful for you. Uh, our next episode will probably have to do with like blues and reactions. I think that's our next discussion point. I've done the video several times on the channel, but I want to make all these videos like in one series. So I am redoing the content a little bit. And we have some new blues from the new set. So it's a lot easier to uh, to kind of you know even redo the content because there's new information to talk about. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, uh, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Um, if you did not enjoy it, that's fine. Let me know how I can do better. Go to our Flesh Burger, leave a like, comment, subscribe on their stuff so we can get more people seeing this game. And yeah, I'll see you all next time on TC Talk. Thank you all so much.